Welcome to the Child Care Genius Podcast, the world's leading authority on child care marketing, mindset, expansion, and profitability. Each episode will feature interviews with the brightest minds in the child care industry to guide you into becoming a smarter business leader. Our hosts have opened 10 schools while raising five children. They are certified business coaches and are the top selling childcare business book authors of all time. This episode is sponsored by Childcare Genius Marketing. Let Childcare Genius Marketing help you get fully enrolled and fully staffed. Visit childcaregenius.com for more details. Let's welcome to the Childcare Genius Podcast our hosts. Brian and Carol Dupre. Welcome to the Child Care Genius Podcast. We're your hosts, Brian and Carol Dupre. In for an exciting episode today, we have a special guest from um, our neighboring state, mm-hmm. one of our neighboring states, Massachusetts, mm-hmm. and that is Darcy Kennedy of the Magical Years. And uh, she's got four schools down in uh, Massachusetts, just south of Boston. And Carol and I, she's a dynasty high-level VIP coaching client of ours. So we've actually toured every one of her schools. We've spent mm-hmm. an entire day with her as part of our coaching and uh, site evaluated, looked at profitability numbers, financials, things like that, improving her culture. And so we know her schools inside now, and we wanted to have her on as a guest because she's absolutely fantastic. Yes dynamic speaker. Um, we just love Darcy. Um, before we begin, wanted to remind everybody that tickets uh, are going to be on sale October 1st for our Child Care Genius Live Conference in Las Vegas, but we are on waitlist right now. If you want to join the waitlist, it'll allow you to get tickets $200 off um, full price. If you could join our waitlist, you'll have an opportunity to buy tickets before the general public does at $200 off a ticket. So that uh, is April 14th, 15th, and 16th, 2025 at the Golden Nugget in Las Vegas, the world's most advanced child care conference. So go to childcaregenius.com today under the conference tab, select Child Care Genius Live and join our wait list. There's no obligation. Let us know how many tickets you're going to want to want. And when we open up ticket sales for the for the wait list only, uh, they'll be at $200 off per ticket. So go ahead and do that today. Um, so again, let's welcome a... Darcy Kennedy is going to be our guest. We'll welcome her on the line right now. So let's get Darcy on the line. Hi, Darcy. Welcome to the Child Care Genius Podcast. Hi, Carol. Hi, Brian. Nice to see you both. Hi, Darcy. Good to see you. My goodness, it's been a couple months since we've seen you. We were in Massachusetts at your schools there a couple months ago. How are things? How's your summer going? It's going good. It's busy as ever, you know, chasing around the five of my own children, keeping up with their schedules, but it's been a good summer so far. So we're looking forward to the rest of it. Yeah. Darcy, uh, mama five in five, you know, not, not, uh, not older ones too. You got five, you know, that you're <laughs> handling and yep. we got to see you're a hockey mom too, which yes, like, like, like <laughs> Like the traditional <laughs> soccer mom, except hockey moms have bigger vehicles because they're more gear, right? Yes, they do. Yes, three of my boys play hockey, so their gear takes up at least half of my vehicle. So got to drive the big van to scoot them all around. But And hockey doesn't end in the summer, just so everybody knows. It's a year-round sport, so we're still still hitting the ice even in the, in the dog days of summer. That I did not know, but mm-hmm. you got this huge sprinter van <laughs> that fits like 82 people in it at least it looked like that to me and you, you know. you're just driving around that beast like a tank around that yep. yeah and my husband's like Darcy do not drive that like it's a coupe you have a 15 passenger van I'm like what do you mean I didn't even see the curb it's fine <laughs> no worries here <laughs> Darcy, you are a rock star in the uh, in Massachusetts in childcare, and I wanted to bring you on the podcast and talk a little bit about what you're doing down there, some of your goals and dreams. Mm-hmm. I've coached you now for a little while; really enjoy working with you. So, tell us more about your background, what your life was like before you entered the crazy childcare business. Yeah, so I went to college and got my degree in early childhood, and I come from a background of entrepreneurs. So my mother owned a dance studio for 30 years. She recently retired. Um, And so right out of college, I really, I worked for her. 
um, teaching dance classes. And I also knew I always wanted to get into the early childhood field. So I worked at a Montessori school for a little while. And um, about a year or so after graduating college is when I opened up the magical years. Nice. Yeah. And how long have you been doing it now? We are coming up on our 19th year this September. Nice. Wow. That's a, exciting. And tell me a little about how, how many locations you have and so currently we have four locations, one we just acquired this past December, um, and we grew from a one-room preschool half-day program to serving over 500 families um, across four towns. So um, it's definitely been a journey and one I would never change. So it's been great. Awesome. Tell your audience what makes your child care centers different from other centers in your area. So like I mentioned, we started off as like a one room, small preschool. And one thing that I feel sets us apart is that we're like a family. And even though we have grown over the last 19 years, that family like feel hasn't hasn't changed. The, the community, the culture, that is something that we hold near and dear to our heart. Um, also, we are not just a child care center. We don't just do daycare. We're also an educationally based program. Um, and that is something that we will always continue to do. And education and developmentally appropriate practice for the children is something that we um, we really, really hone in on. And so I think that's what sets us aside. And I have a stellar staff. I love my staff. My leadership team is amazing. And I can truly say that my leadership team pours their heart and soul into my programs. And that is a testament to itself that that's how we roll. That's how we do our day to day. and. I'm really grateful for that. Fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, granted, expansion sometimes can be tricky. Yeah. And, you know, 95% of all child care owners never open a second school. So you've got yeah. four under your belt now. What are yeah. some obstacles you face when trying to grow and expand your school? I think for me, the biggest obstacles were letting go of the reins and trusting, finding the right people to do the day-to-day -day operations that I did myself for so long. And being able to have those operations and systems in place to continue to grow. And that for me was a challenge. Um, aside from like finding staff and doing, you know, making sure that you have the right people in the right seat. Um, but for me, it was the delegation piece, making sure that everybody was bought into our vision, our mission, and our core values. And um, finding those people that are going to be here to live and breathe what you live and breathe. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's hard to ever think you could do number two if um your first center's kind of a mess and you don't have systems in place and you're yes. working in it 60 hours a week. Yes. Yeah. yeah, no, it's hard. And and being able to have people buy into what what your passion is, you know, you're essentially trying to not replicate yourself, but find those people who are going to wake up every day and do this for the love and do it for the families and for the children. Sure. It, it, it's it finding the right team and letting go and trusting. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And trusting. Sure. That is it. Yeah. Still working on that. <laughs> yeah, it's hard for a perfectionist to expand. Yeah. Um, because everything has to be perfect and perfectionists can expand because they never want to let go. So right. you, even though I'm a perfectionist and I think you are too, Darcy. Mm -hmm. you have, yes. You know, through therapy and coaching. <laughs> yeah. Go and and not have the tight reins and be able to accept little less than perfection. Realize that other people sometimes do it better than us. Well, that's the thing. I think I've learned over the years that I can't grow. I can't grow as a leader. I my my team can't grow. They have to learn too from their mistakes. And I learn from my mistakes every single day. And the only way to do that is to delegate and to entrust that everybody is going to put forth their best effort. And I have learned so much from my leadership team. Um, and I always think to myself, we wouldn't be where we are today if, if it wasn't for all of them. So I'm thankful for that. Absolutely. How has coaching helped you grow your business? Well, that's, that has been a life changer for me across all coaching platforms I have participated in, but mostly it's knowing you're not alone because it's very lonely on the top and you find a community of people who are, you can relate to, right? So 
and it's in a, it's a different business. You know, my mom had a dance school, but that was different. Right. And so I have friends who are entrepreneurs that are in different business. I'm like, it's not the same. And so finding that community of people that are like, yes, I hear you. I see you. We're all going through the same thing um, has definitely helped. And having a one-on-one -on -one coach, being able to like, Brian sound, be my soundboard. Can you help me get my systems better? Can you help me with my finances? Can you help me find better ways that I can grow and maybe let go? Ooh, that's a good one. Grow and let go <laughs> um, has definitely been invaluable to me. Those are the things that, you know, I've, I've needed and has helped me for the past, you know, couple of years for sure. Awesome. Well, it, it helps to have a student who's very open-minded and willing to bet a lot of people sometimes they get a professional especially the perfectionist people that i've coached it, it's hard to uh, you know you're set in their ways sometimes it's hard to learn you're yes. a good student you're willing to pivot and make changes and that's a good owner so that, this yes. is why you're growing so fast thank you yes <laughs> thank you so where do you see yourself three years from now what, what's some of your long-term goals Oh gosh. I, I mean, I think about this often and for me, growth within the center, whether it be growing to more locations would be great, but growing more as a leader and growing my leadership team and growing my staff is what's important to me. I love nothing more than seeing my, my leadership team want to grow, seeing them hungry, seeing them be like, what are we doing next, Darcy? And I'm like, oh boy, that's so motivation, motivational. Um, and even my staff, you know, just seeing them grow, the teachers, you know, your assistants growing to teachers, growing to maybe being part of your leadership team. Um, I love being a part of that. So whether it's growing to more locations, you never know, or growing just as a, as a leadership and seeing my team also grow is something I look forward to. If you had it to do all over again, what would you do differently? Oh God. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think if I could do something differently, it would have been finding a coaching program sooner, um, learning more about putting better systems in place so that you are coming from a place of process rather than just figuring it out along the way. Let's be real. Most early childhood educators don't come out with a business degree, right? They come into this field because they love children. They want to help families and um, if I could do it any differently, it would be finding a coach sooner and and working to have better systems in place so that you're not just hoping for the best. <laughs> That's what I would do differently too, Darcy, because yeah. it's struggle in the early days. Yeah. It's very lonely place in the job yes. your ownership. It is. You know, can't share with your team what you're struggling with, you, you know, and sometimes your spouse doesn't even want to know what's go what, you, what you're struggling <laughs> with. Sometimes it's yep. the loneliest place in the world. And sometimes the coach is just there to to make you feel like you're not so alone. And uh, that yeah. I could have used that sooner, that's for sure. Yeah, helping you through the process and even networking in the community of your centers. You know, it's you know, I think back in the early days, that wasn't really a big thing. And I think now people are working together to network and and know that we're here for the same reason. So let's just work together. For sure. So what would you say the most challenging thing for you as an owner since COVID? I'd have challenging things since COVID. It's probably staffing. I feel like prior to COVID, and I'm sure most, you know, people in the educational field can feel this way. Um, but for me, I think it's finding those staff that want to be here, that want to work with children, that really want to hone in on their passion. And that I feel as though it's been the biggest struggle since COVID is finding those people that that want to continue to grow in the field. Yeah, I think it's been a challenge across the board for most people. It's been the staff and the staff attitudes and staff culture. Um, yes. When we were at your school, we yes, saw the culture for sure. People with, yeah. and you had a great culture. So you've done for a good sure. job in recovery since yeah. then uh, compared to some other schools I've been to. So that's a testament to your leadership. So good job there. Thank you. I think it's important to, is to make sure that everybody um, knows why they're there and what their purpose is. 
And like I've said to everybody, pretend that this is, you know, this is your child. This is your niece. This is your family member. And how would you want this family to feel? And how would you, and that's where our family piece comes in. At the end of the day, they become like family. And um, that, that's always been very important to me. Yeah, and they are family. And that's, that is important. Um, yeah. And I think the parents need to know that you treat, if you they know you treat everybody like family, they're going to gravitate to you. Right. And give you the benefit of the doubt if something challenging comes up. Right. Exactly. You're hoping it is. Yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. For sure. Well, I, I, the reason I wanted to bring you on, I've obviously, as the listeners now know, you have a great story. You're doing incredibly well uh, for yourself. We enjoy working with you. And we're so proud to have you on the Child Care Genius University team. Mm -hmm. And we want to thank you for coming on the Child Care Podcast today, Genius Podcast, sharing your story and being an inspiration, a blessing to other people. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. And thanks for being part of my journey. And I look forward to, to more, more working together with you guys. I appreciate all of it. If they wanted to see your website, the listeners, where, where would they go to, to learn a little about, about the magical years? They would go to www.themagicalyears.org. Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you so much, Darcy. We'll put that in our show notes. If anybody wants to check out the magical years, uh, in Massachusetts. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. That was great. I love her. <laughs> I just picture her driving that big old van around town. <laughs> the whole hockey team. I could see it. I now. remember when we saw it, you're like, that must be the school's bus. <laughs> yeah, no, that's her personal vehicle. When you have five children and a hockey equipment, yeah. you do that. But she has done something magical in childcare and yeah. she just loves her staff, loves her team, and has done great things with childcare down mm -hmm. in southern Massachusetts. Yeah. Um so that uh concludes this episode of the Child Care Genius Podcast. Uh, if we can help you out in any way, shape, or form, email me, Brian, B R I A N, at childcaregenius.com. Be happy to help you out. Um, and if you need a coaching call, if you're a center owner and you haven't done a coaching call with me before, go on our website, childcaregenius.com, under the coaching tab, select the like a free coaching call, and I'll be able to happy to get on a call and give you some tips and tools to help you get out of the overwhelm. And we will conclude this episode, and we hope you um, enjoyed it. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss a future episode of the Child Care Genius Podcast. And we'll see you next week. All right. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Child Care Genius Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please do us a favor and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a future episode. Don't forget to visit our website at childcaregenius.com to see a list of services we offer to help grow your child care business. Until next time, thank you for being a part of the Child Care Genius community.